Welcome to our broadcast today. I'm Jerry Savelle. Thank you for joining with me. And we're going to take you back into our service here at Heritage of Faith Christian Center, church I founded a number of years ago right here in Crowley, Texas. And by the way, if you're ever in Crowley, Texas, come by and visit us. We'd love to have you in a, one of our services. We've been talking about the Word of Faith, we're, especially in this service, talking about how that you can exercise your faith for marvels, wonders, and extraordinary manifestations of the greatness of God. Now, in this service, uh, we're, or in this lesson, and I'm going to take you into that service while I was preaching this, we're talking about primarily the two basic fundamental principles for releasing the God kind of faith. Jesus told us to have faith in God, Mark the 11th chapter. One translation says, have the God kind of faith. The two basic principles for releasing the God kind of faith, Jesus said in Mark the 11th chapter and the 23rd verse, He said, saying and believing, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt that those things which he saith shall come to pass, but believing he shall have whatsoever he saith. So the two basic principles for releasing the God kind of faith is number one, say it. Number two, believe it. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So whatever's in your heart in abundance, that's what's going to come out. The Apostle Paul said, I believe, therefore have I spoken. So we're going to talk about this in this message today, and I trust that it'll get deep down on the inside of you. You'll never forget it. You'll act upon it, continue to act upon it, and experience marvels, wonders, and extraordinary manifestations of the greatness of God. Watch now. I'll be back in just a few moments. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. Hebrews 11 and verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please God without faith. Faith, please understand, is not a movement. It's not a fad. It's not just a popular message or unpopular message. It's a lifestyle. And it's the lifestyle that God has chosen for His people to live. And it's actually not a recommendation or a suggestion. It is a command. The just shall live by faith. Look at your neighbor and say, are you one of the just? <laughs> then point your finger at him and say nicely, you shall live by faith. <laughs> Amen. Now, Hebrews 11.1 1 from the message translation says, the fundamental fact of existence is that this trust in God, this faith, is the firm foundation under everything that makes life worth living. It's the firm foundation for everything that God wants you to experience that will cause your life to be a life worth living. How many of you want a life worth living? Yes. And then the Bible tells us in the latter part of that verse that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So notice God rewards people that continue to live by faith and endeavor to please him in doing so. I'll remind you the prophetic word this year. It's, it's about marvels and wonders and extraordinary manifestations of the greatness of our God. But let me also remind you of an important principle. We've talked about it before that is found in Hebrews chapter 4. Go with me to Hebrews 4. Verse 2. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Notice the Bible says that even though they heard the message, it did not profit them because they didn't mix faith with it when they heard it. How do you mix faith with what you hear. The, the elementary way is simply saying, I receive that. 
I received that. Amen. And I kept holding on to it until it came to pass. Amen. So even if marvels, wonders, and extraordinary manifestations of the greatness of God is something you've never experienced, say by faith, I receive that. And if it is something you've experienced, then say by faith, I receive greater manifestations of it in the days to come. Can you say amen? But don't just sit there. Don't just sit there and say, wasn't that a good little sermon the little preacher gave us? No, don't just sit there. Mix faith with it. You know, most people, they'll just sit there and mix doubt and unbelief with it. Well, if you can mix doubt and unbelief with it, why can't you mix faith with it? I choose to mix faith with it. Amen. And notice it says it did not profit them. Uh, the message translation says it didn't do them a bit of good because they didn't receive the promise with faith. And the Amplified says it did not benefit them. Why? Because they didn't mix faith with it. Now, let's go to Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. So I want you to experience extraordinary things. I'm experiencing them, praise God. And God's no respecter of persons, but he does respond to faith. Luke chapter 5. And look at verse 17. And it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Underline that phrase. Notice while he was teaching, the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Heal them who? Them doctors of the law, them Pharisees, and, and all those religious people that were sitting there hearing what he said. Now, if you keep reading this, I dare you to find one of them that was healed. Not one of them. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. But it doesn't record not one person in that group that got healed. Why not? Well, perhaps they weren't mixing faith with the word preached. In fact, we know they weren't. They weren't there to receive his message. They were there to try to trap him somehow. These are religious people, doctors of the law. He didn't, he didn't fit into their group. So they're not mixing faith with what he was preaching. And as a result of it, it didn't benefit one of them. That tells me that people can be sitting in a service just like this, hearing the prophetic word, hearing the word preached, and walk right out of here and it not benefit you. And the primary reason is because you didn't mix faith with it. Amen. Why would you even come to a service if you're not going to mix faith with what you hear? Don't you want change in your life? Don't you want God to do something in your life? Well, sure we do. Amen. So say again, I receive the prophetic word in Jesus' name. Marvels, wonders, extraordinary manifestations of the greatness of my God will happen to me this year and beyond in Jesus' name. And give him a good shout and thank him for it. Amen. Now let's go to Mark the 11th chapter. Mark the 11th chapter. We're talking about faith for the extraordinary. You can't talk about faith without going to Mark the 11th chapter. Verse 22, Jesus answering saith unto them, have faith in God. Have faith in God. There are other translations that say, have the faith of God. And still another translation says, have the God kind of faith. And then he begins to illustrate how the God kind of faith operates. Look in verse 23. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, 
shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Now two very basic elements of releasing God kind of faith. Number one, saying. Number two, believing. Number one, saying. And number two, believing. Now, over the years, I've heard people say, I don't believe me saying it has anything to do with it. Well, Jesus said it did. And if I got to pick which one's not telling the truth, you're it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Jesus said, if you believe those things which you saith shall come to pass, you shall have whatsoever you saith. So that is basic faith 101. <laughs> faith speaks, faith believes. If you don't ever speak about marvels, wonders, and extraordinary manifestations, it's not likely you'll ever experience them. Amen. 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 You have to talk them. Yes, Why? Because it is a proven fact. Out of the abundance of your heart, the mouth speaks. Yes. Whatever is in your heart in abundance, that's what's going to come out of your mouth. Right. You can't help it. That's the reason people that, that use profanity all the time, when you, when you say, do you have to talk like that? They say, what are you talking about? <laughs> Amen. You can't help it. If you're full of negative speech, that's what's going to come out. If you're full of sickness, disease, poverty, lack, and want, that's what's going to come out. You, you get in a crowd where people are talking the word, and, 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 if, and if you have an opportunity to say something, it's going to come out negative because that's what you're full of. That's good. Amen. So one of the things that's important about learning to operate in the God kind of faith you have to renew your mind. Yes. You have to reprogram your spirit. Yes, sir. You have to replace what you've been taught to say, yes, sir. what you've been raised up saying yes. with the Word of God. Teaches. Now, Carolyn, I didn't know these things when we first heard them from Brother Copeland, but when we first heard them, we realized. In fact, Brother Copeland said to me, Jerry, your problem is your big mouth. Now, that's not what I wanted to hear. I wanted to slap him. <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm probably the only person in this church that likes you, and you just, you just insulted me. <laughs> but he was right. I, I, was, I was still talking doubt and unbelief. And then he said, and you need to learn the vocabulary of silence, and then just turned around and walked off. And I thought, what in the world is the vocabulary of silence? I never heard such a phrase. And then later he asked me, he said, did you understand what I told you earlier today? I said, no, I don't understand the vocabulary of silence. What is that? He said, if you can't talk the word, shut up. I said, I understand that. <laughs> and I've said over the years, one of the greatest investments that most Christians could make is a roll of duct tape <laughs> and just keep a piece on your mouth if you can't talk the word. Amen. Amen. So notice here, Jesus said, what things, uh, what, whatsoever, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and not doubt in his heart, but believe those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. So once again, the basic principles of releasing the God kind of faith, saying, believing. Yes. Saying, believing. When I talk marvels, wonders and extraordinary manifestation of the greatness of God, I believe it. I believe I'm going to see them. I'm not hoping for it. I'm not, I'm not uh, uh, you know, just playing games. If I say it, then I believe it's going to come to pass. And I'm going to hold fast to it until it does come to pass. Can you say Amen. Now, these are just basic elements of the God kind of faith, releasing the God kind of faith. Yeah. Amen. 2 Corinthians 4.13, Paul said, and he's quoting David, I believed, therefore have I spoken. Yeah. 
You're going to talk what you believe. Matthew 12, 34, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Amen. Now, a lot of people have the idea, in particular a lot of Christians today. Well, I really don't have to do anything. If it's God's will, it'll just happen. Well, what are you going to do with Hebrews chapter 10, 35, and 36? Cast not away, therefore, your confidence. It's talking about you. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence or your faith, which hath great recompense and reward. For you have need of patience, that after you've done the will of God, you might receive the promise. So notice there are two parts to what you do in this verse. Refuse to cast away your faith. And number two, remain patient, or in other words, refuse to give up. That's something you do. Amen? Refuse to cast away your faith. And then number two, remain patient. Or in other words, refuse to give up. What's God's part? He will cause the promise to come to pass. He's not going to do your part. Your part is to hold fast to your faith. Regardless of how impossible it may seem, don't ever cast away your faith. Praise God. Keep talking what you believe. Keep holding fast to what you believe and keep trusting God to make it happen and he will bring it to pass. Can you say amen? amen. Your thoughts, your behavior, your actions create specific effects that will manifest and create your life as you know it. That's commonly referred to as the law of cause and effect. Cause and effect. Which means every effect, for every effect, there is a definite cause. Likewise, for every cause, there is a definite effect. Hallelujah. So, once again, saying and believing. Now, I learned this 50 years ago. If I say it enough, I will eventually believe it. And if I keep believing it, it will eventually come to pass. I say that again. If I say it enough, I will eventually believe it. If I believe it enough, eventually it will come to pass. Now, you know, you may, you may say, if I ask you today, uh, say this with me, and I ask you to say, marvels, wonders, extraordinary manifestation of the greatness of God is what's going to happen to me in 2019. Well, you might say that because I ask you to but you may not believe it yet. Yeah. Psalm 35, 27, let them say continually. <laughs> let them say continually. You're not going to just say it once and change a behavior pattern. Let them say continually. The message translation says over and over and over. And uh, verse 28 says from the message translation, all day, every day. <laughs> All day, every day. How many of you are actually doing that regarding marvels, wonders, and extraordinary manifestations? Over and over and over. All day, every day. Amen. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 11, God says, His word will not return void. Void implies without having any effect. God says, My word will not return unto me without having an effect. Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 28. He that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. Faithfully here implies with strong assurance. Amen. Strong assurance of what? That it will come to pass if you faithfully, continually speak it, praise God. So you have to ask yourself this question. How badly do I want to see extraordinary things in my life? Then ask yourself this question. How Willing am I to do what it takes to make it happen? And then finally ask yourself, and how long am I willing to keep it up? Amen. Psalm 50, verse 23, to him that ordereth his conversation aright. To him that ordereth his conversation aright. That's like a military term. In other words, you... you are taking authority over your mouth. He that ordereth his conversation aright. And then it says, will I show the salvation of God? God says, if you get your speech right, you'll start seeing things. 
Amen. Get your speech right, and you're going to see more of the extraordinary manifestation of God's greatness. Hallelujah. I hope I'm helping you, praise God. Psalm 91, David knew this principle. Verses 2 and 3, I will say of the Lord. And then he goes on to say, and surely he will. Notice, I will say it first, and surely he will. I'll say it, he'll do it. I'll say it, he'll do it. Say it with me. I'll say it. God will do it. It may not happen overnight, but if you keep saying it, God will do it. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, David also learned the importance of not speaking the right things. For he said in verse, uh, chapter 31, verse 22, for I said in my haste, that's what people do so much. They say in their haste. They say under pressure. They say things that they shouldn't be saying when things are not going right. They just, they just let whatever comes out of their mouth come out of their mouth without putting a guard over their mouth. Amen. Job once said in Job 6, 24 and 25, teach me and I will hold my tongue, cause me to understand wherein I have erred. And then he said, how forcible are right words. So Job learned that his mouth was one of his biggest problems. He said, teach me and I'll hold my tongue. How forcible or how powerful are right words. Can you say amen? amen? And then Jesus said in Matthew 12, 37, for by thy words thou shalt be justified and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. So if you read that scripture alone, if, I had, if you hadn't heard any other scripture I gave to you this morning, if you read that one alone and you still say, my words don't have anything to do with it. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you're deceived. Your words have everything to do with it. So how many of you intend to develop faith for the extraordinary? Did I help you this morning doing that? Amen. Lift your hands right now and say, Lord, I fully intend to develop my faith this year to a higher level than it's ever been before. I'm not backing off. I'm not letting anybody talk me out of it. And I believe, according to the Word of God, those things which I say and believe in my heart, I shall have them. In Jesus' name. I shall have marvels, wonders, extraordinary manifestations of the greatness of my God. And because I believe it, I'm going to shout in advance, hallelujah. 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 Glory, glory, glory. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. We are here for you. Become the winner that God wants you to be. Jerry Savelle Ministries has faith-building, encouraging posts, resources, videos, and more that are just a swipe, click, or download away. Don't let a day go by without building your faith. Follow and like us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Also, make sure to visit jerrysavelle.org and share your prayer request or praise reports with us. We want to connect our faith with yours and celebrate what God is doing in your life. Your faith is the title deed to God's promises. It doesn't matter what mountain you might be facing, by faith you can overcome. In his timely book, Life of Faith, Jerry Savelle shares insights from the Bible and over five decades of his own faith journey. In its pages, you'll learn how to release your faith and see beyond your present circumstances. Discover that your faith has the ability to grow, to sustain not just yourself, but you can be a blessing to others. It is impossible to please God without faith. In the powerful three CD teaching, Life of Faith, 
Jerry teaches spiritual truths every believer needs to learn. Living a life of faith will produce your greatest adventures. Nothing is impossible with God. Don't wait any longer. Call or go online to jerrysavelle.org and request the Life of Faith package, including the book and three CD teaching. Living by faith is a biblical command. You can live by faith, overcome the world by faith, and be the winner that God has called you to be today. Praise God. I trust you enjoyed the broadcast today. And once again, as I like to say nearly on every broadcast, I trust that your faith has gone to another level. Why? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And you've heard the Word of God today, so expect your faith to go to another level. And listen, if you're ever in our area, in Crowley, Texas, come by and see us. We'd love to visit with you, love to share the Word with you, praise God. And uh, I know that if you get in one of our services at Heritage of Faith, you are going to be inspired, and it's going to teach you how to become the winner in life that God has called you to be. I want to share some testimonies with you. I love reading these, and, uh, and once again, they also are designed to inspire your faith. Here's someone, Kim, she said, I had been in the hospital, ended up with a, uh, almost a $5,000 medical bill, right at $5,000, and I called to make payment arrangements, and the lady that I spoke to at the hospital, she said, to my surprise, you don't owe anything. My debt was completely canceled. Hallelujah. I rejoice with you, Kim. That's a miracle, a sign, and a wonder, praise God. And then finally one, it says, I praise my God for both my feet have been healed. I really thank all of you for your prayers and the word that you teach, praise God. Thank you for sharing that with us. And I pray if there's anyone else that's going through a financial crisis, I pray that God will respond to your faith just like He did to theirs. Anyone that's experiencing uh, suffering in your feet, I pray that God will heal your feet just like He did theirs. Amen. God is no respecter of persons. Don't forget to uh, stay in touch with us through social media. Uh, it's one of the ways that we can continue to inspire you and uh, share the Word with you. And once again, it's a great way to stay connected. Don't forget our resource this first, uh, actually the last time we'll be offering this series, my book on the life of faith, and then right along with it, three CDs on the same subject, The Life of Faith. These are powerful materials that will help you learn how to live by faith and teach you how to stay focused on the Word of God until your breakthrough comes. So don't delay. Order them today. Go online, jerrysavelle.org, and find out how to order this information. All right. Next week, we'll begin a brand new series, and I look forward to seeing you then. Blessings on you, and your faith will overcome the world.